Welcome back, everybody. Derek Sue, your East Oakland advocate. Well, you know, the weather is warming up this past weekend uh, online, uh, on social media. Uh, some of my relatives are even getting uh, ready up in Sacramento uh, for the striper run that's about to start up there. And so that means that the stri striper run for the Bay Area or down here in the Bay will be happening very soon. Typically, it's, it's late May and then extends into July. And um, these are the schoolies. These are the one-year-olds that are heading down from the Sacramento River, American River, uh, where they were, their eggs were actually um, laid in fresh water. And then uh, through all the cascading and movement, uh, the striped bass now have uh, uh, reach uh, a certain size in the Sacramento River uh, and now they're going to be feeding on the larger uh, anchovies sardines out in the ocean so uh, during if you remember back in December and January we had a huge uh, herring um, spawn here in the Bay Area and so right now they the Bay is full of uh, uh, baby fry uh, that are herring. And so the herring schools uh, that still exist here in the bay uh, are gaining in size and soon will be uh, washed out into the ocean. So if you notice, we've had uh, a gray whale uh, that's been hanging around in the bay uh, for over a month. Uh, and it's been sighted uh, over in the San Francisco area uh, to the Tiburon area. And so that's a good sign that the bay is in uh, good health because we have a lot of uh, food that are bringing in not only uh, gray whales but also porpoises and so that means that migratory fish will also be hanging around just outside the gate where the herring uh, will more than likely be uh, in large schools and, and that's what creates the pods of food for our uh, uh, traversing uh, whales, our migratory whales, uh, heading north and then heading south uh, uh, for their migratory se uh, season. But anyway, the striped bass uh, season is about to get underway. Like I said, I have a relative in, in uh, Sacramento that was showing off his boat, getting it ready for uh, striper season. But anyway, uh, this past weekend, I was uh, uh, filming some B-roll, uh, blank roll, for the documentary that we're closing out here in the Bay Area. And so uh, my filming crew bought me this. It, it's a prop. It was a prop for the documentary. And, and uh, we actually used this in, in a fishing uh, a scene. We didn't catch anything. We, the intention wasn't so much for catching, but, but uh, the guys did try. Uh, but anyway... I have this now, and believe me, this this rod, this prop, uh, this is a $30 fishing rod that the guys got for um, the uh, documentary. And so anyway, uh, they, they left it with me uh, because they don't have a use for it. And uh, at one point, I was going to give it to a child out there uh, where we were doing our, our filming. And then I decided, well, you know, I could, uh, we have striped bass season, the, the striper run right here in the bay about to start. And so uh, I thought that I would this year pull my fishing license and go fishing around the bay and show you some of the great uh, fishing spots around the bay. I'm going uh fish the Alameda rock wall sometime later this year that will be for halibut and so uh, typically around uh, uh, August is when we'll uh, get the nice uh, 8 pound the 12 pound size halibut uh, that we can catch just off the Alameda rock wall oh by the way this rod here is not a, a typical rod that I would use or that I had ever purchased <clears throat> this one is is a is an entry level um, thirty dollar rod. Literally, the guys got all of this for thirty dollars. A fishing rod. It's a nine foot uh, fishing rod, so it, it's kind of a little short for a surf rod, a little too long for a boat rod. 
but for a shoreline rod where you're you're casting live bait this would be this would be very good and so I was looking at the specs on this uh, this is an all fiberglass rod foam grips fore and aft and the reel is thermal plastic essentially uh, it, it's really cheap so I wouldn't expect it to hold up uh, uh, for much but the interesting uh, specs on this particular fishing rod uh, is I'm going to show you turn turn your fishing rods over this way like this and you'll get some information about the fishing rod so I'll uh, talk about that this is a medium heavy uh, fishing rod so this is uh, good for the bay especially for uh, striped bass striped bass here in the bay can can easily uh, average eight and uh, I've caught them as big as uh, 30 pounds here inside the bay. And when I was eight years old, uh, that great big striper that was uh, nearly, well, it was a little better than half my size. Uh, that was uh, 34 pounds, that striper. And that was caught out at Brothers uh, Lighthouse in San Pablo Bay. But anyway, this is a medium heavy rod. And the best line for this it was designed for is 10 to 12 or 10 to 20 pound test uh, line uh, monofilament and so um, that's what is all, already spooled it came spooled on this particular uh, fishing rod um, like I said this <clears throat> when I when I cast this and when I felt this you know for the documentary I said wow this is surely a, a very different uh, rod and then it, it's it's also very numb feeling. You don't, you can't really feel the bottom uh, when when you're dragging the bottom with the weight, and so it, it's not very sensitive. Uh, so again, this is an entry level rod, and it's not meant to be uh, used for a lot of things. And, but you know, it's made by a brand name, Shakespeare brand name, uh, the Tiger series. So. <clears throat> One of their, their uh, made in China, and these are very, very cheap rods. Uh, typically, in the past, what I, I had, I had G. Loomis rods. I had uh, um, uh, Abel custom rods. I had uh, Steve Abel, a friend of mine down in so SoCal, who makes uh, fly rods, custom fly rods. He also made my custom fly rods. Uh, but he also made, a, a, for a short time, a series of bass uh, tournament rods. And so every one of those uh, I had his entire line, and they were custom uh, to my fishing style. And, and so uh, they were very expensive. <laughs> Each one of those rods were uh, cost me about $400. But again, they were custom rods for me, so, and they had my name on them. Uh, also, uh, G. Loomis, which is Gary Loomis. I bought the original G. Loomis, not from uh, G. Loomis after Shimano took them over. But I did, uh, for a short while, I was sponsored by Shimano uh, for my um, uh, semi-pro uh, fishing uh, that I was doing it during the early uh, millennium. And, and I, I fished tournaments professionally or semi-professionally uh, and they were around the bay and all up and down uh, uh, California the Delta uh, and, and SoCal and so I, I fished in halibut tournaments sturgeon tournaments were very common for me uh, halibut fishing tournaments salmon uh, so there were a lot of different uh, types of uh, fishing uh, tournaments that I competed in and, and I did pretty well I had my own boats. I had all my own equipment. Uh, again, uh, my uh, rods, I all, always used really good rods, G. Loomis rods. Um, uh, Lama Glass uh, was another favorite. Lama Glass, uh, Gary Loomis actually worked for Lama Glass before he took off on his own. And so uh, I ha I've been with Gary and uh, bought his rods since Lama Glass. And then when he uh, left Lama Glass and started his own company, G. Loomis, uh, I started uh, going over there and buying uh, rods from uh, Gary and uh, the stores that he uh, his uh, rods were distributed at. And so 
I had very expensive fishing rods uh, up and down. And then I also had some custom uh, rods by Steve Abel. So I had deep sea rods, uh, lake rods. I had uh, just in uh, fishing rods, I had a bedroom. Uh, and uh, I had racks on the walls and then standing rolling racks uh, where I would have my rods vertically and they were already equipped with reels and like I said uh, predominantly uh, all my reels were uh, Shimano line and from top to bottom for saltwater fishing freshwater fishing trolling uh, I didn't get any of the really big reels like you see in uh, Wicked Tuna. So I didn't have anything like that. The biggest uh, uh, reel that I had were the TLD, which is the Triton Level Drag Series, TLD. And the biggest one I had was a TLD 25. The 25 I used for ocean. That was when uh, we were doing big game uh, like uh, albacore, when we were trolling for albacore. That would be my reel for albacore fishing. Uh, and then for uh, here, fishing for sturgeon here in the bay, typically I used a, a TLD 15. Uh, but all my reels were, were spooled up. My, my TLD series were always spooled up with uh, Power Pro braided line. And, and so uh, number one, the, the braided line is very thin uh, kef so that it, it has a very thin profile in the water and less resistance in the water. Uh, and then it was the same color as the water, but very, very strong and, and very resistant to fray because a lot of the fish that I, I fish for using that uh, had sharp teeth also. And those sharp teeth can cut monofilament. Uh, it uh, cut um, the copolymer lines that I use. Uh, sometimes we'd have to use the tungsten leaders in order to fish for some of these fish, uh, especially barracuda. Barracuda, you always had to use a, a tungsten leader uh, for fishing them because they are so toothy. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> what was the shocker for me? Last time that I bought a, a California resident fishing license was back in 2007. In 2007, I was paying uh, $42. The previous year, in uh, 2006, it was only $38. So $42 was the last time that I bought a California resident fishing license. Well, I checked on it, and, and literally there are, there are no sporting goods stores nearby. But I can buy it online, and, and, uh, but it was a shocker. $58.58, $58.58 for a current uh, California fishing license, sport fishing license. Uh, so the, it's gone up tremendously and it, it's very expensive here in California. Uh, and, and I think it's absolutely ridiculous that a California resident has to pay so much. <clears throat> uh, there is a discount for seniors, but I have to turn 65 in order to get that uh, uh, senior discount, but also there are conditions. I have to be on social security, disability, or, or something. Uh, and, and then my fishing uh, license, my special uh, license uh, is nine dollars and one cent. So it's a significant drop. And, and if uh, they had uh, like North Carolina, when I was in North Carolina for those 11 months, I bought a state uh, sportsman's license, which covered everything, literally everything, hunting, fishing, trapping, you name it, it was covered on there. And then you had the booklet uh, with the seasons and then the parameters that you can uh, uh, take quarry. <clears throat> and, and so, but back in North Carolina, for an annual resident sportsman's license in North Carolina back when I was there for 11 months that was uh, 2007 I actually bought it at the top of 2008 because that's when they were issued top of uh, uh, January the new year so I bought this uh, sportsman's license and for the entire year for everything hunting and fishing ran me $38 and 
there's a tremendous amount of fishing going on in North Carolina. There's a lot of tournaments. There's a lot of uh, lakes and a lot of boats. So uh, the license is very reasonable. I, I believe if California would cut their, their prices back to where it's affordable for everybody, they, number one, have fewer problems with uh, citations and writing people up for not having uh, their fishing license. Uh, also, uh, the difficulty at getting a fishing license now as compared to uh, back in 2006, 2007, when I uh, last bought one, we still had uh, sportsman, uh, sports, uh, um, Sport Mart. We had Sport Mart back then. And then we also had, uh, uh, let's see what other, uh, Target. And uh, then there were West Marine. We have the bait shops that we can go to. So there's still some bait shops around that, that uh, uh, sell fishing license. And also, but a lot of them sell the one day fishing license, the one day fishing license. So if you're a resident and you're just going out on a party boat and, and this is the only time you're ever going to do it, that's what the one day and two day fishing licenses are for. Not so much that uh, you buy them whenever you need to go. It's, uh, if you did that and you went more than four times uh, that year in, 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 in a single calendar year, you essentially already paid for a full year fishing license. So uh, I plan on going more than four times this year because I, I want to do uh, Oakland's Middle Harbor. I'm going to fish over there where, where I used to fish uh, back in my young days and back in the 80s. And there were some great fishing out there. I caught some uh, beautiful stripers out there on mudsuckers, live mudsuckers. So that's what I'm going to be doing on that. And I'm going to use this rod to show you pretty much that you can catch anything with even on a really crappy rod because uh, uh, the rods that I used to uh, purchase, they started at $200 and my custom rods were $600. Uh, my reels, I think the cheapest reel that I had uh, at the time was 100 bucks, and, and uh, yeah, they went up from there. Uh, most expensive reel that, that I had was, was about $300. Uh, and, and it was all the tackle though. It was the hooks, the line, uh, the additional leaders, the lures, the weights, because uh, I had uh, fishing gear. Back in the day, I had fishing gear specifically just for fresh water and then a separate bag specifically for salt water. And then I broke down the boxes inside of each one of those tackle uh, bags because uh, these were tournament bags that I took aboard. And, and so they everything was compartmentalized, lures, jigs, weights. I mean, you name it. I had it uh, just in, in my hook collection uh, for my saltwater hooks. I had well over $4,000 invested just in uh, name brand hooks. And, and I used a lot, a lot of gamakatsus. Uh, I did have some mustats, but then um, I, I tried to use always the, the best ones, the best hooks possible, but predominantly gamakatsu was uh, the hooks that I, I typically went to because I had fewer problems. They lasted a long time and they were very, very sturdy. And, and there were other brands also, because like I said, I had a lot of money invested in, in hooks and swivels. Uh, I, I bought uh, swivels in bulk uh, at uh, one time. I even uh, secured a wholesale license for uh, fishing tackle and, and I was buying that's how much I was buying at, at the time. It was like enough to uh, supply a small store. Uh, and, but that was uh, the, the bulk that I was buying in because I was uh, competing in tournaments and I had to have lots of equipment on, on hand, the tools, the, uh, the crimpers, all sorts of different uh, things that uh, a lot of fishermen will never use here in the bay, but I would use down in SoCal. I would use in the Midwest, back east, um, and, and overseas. And so there were a lot of fishing opportunities, and it it was necessary that I had uh, a lot of different uh, 
types of fishing rods for different uh, fishing situations and for even for uh, the the fish uh, I had uh, rods that were dedicated for that so anyway fishing season is kicking off folks get your prop uh, your uh, fishing rods your uh, tackle boxes property everything put together get your fishing license let's go fishing and there are two days that are uh, allotted every year for free fishing day uh, sad part here is that the bay area has virtually no more public fishing piers they have all fallen into predominantly disrepair and are closed or have been already uh, removed uh, we're seeing uh, two big uh, fishing piers <clears throat> uh, being removed along the coast pacifica and then uh, what was the other one uh, near yeah it was pacifica and uh, montera uh, and then also santa cruz ha has uh, some damage on their pier uh, uh, but, but the pacifica pier uh, we'll see uh, what happens uh, so we're losing a lot of piers and public fishing piers because right now in california a public Fishing Pier is the only place where you can fish without a license 365 days a year. Anywhere else that you fish or on, from any other shoreline or from a boat, you are mandated to have a California fishing license, whether you're a resident or not. A uh, resident fishing license is $58.58 .58 for a non-resident Add $100, 15858 if you're a non-resident. So if you're a non-resident here in California, you better be doing a lot of fishing for $158.58. <clears throat> but <sighs> fishing season's about to get underway. Uh, the striped bass run is incredible. I've I've uh, been through some uh, some fantastic uh, striper runs here in the bay like i said it's going to be starting up here uh latter part of may so this is the opportunity for for folks to get your boats ready get your bait wells in shape your pumps in shape your fishing line your fishing gear uh and <clears throat> make sure that you have your fishing license that you also know the fishing zones that you can fish and you cannot fish and there's uh California Fish and Game Wildlife, they are out of Berkeley Marina. They have a, a office and they have a high-speed interceptor uh, warden, a game warden boat out there. So uh, they do patrol the waters. I've been, uh, <clears throat> back in the day, uh, they were still fairly new, that boat, as I remember when it first came into Berkeley. Uh, I was uh, stopped once uh, on the bay to check all my gear uh, fishing licenses and everything, but they typically are looking for for illegal poachers, people that are are doing uh, things against the law, breaking the regulations, especially sturgeon fishing, uh, and, and the type of hooks you have to make sure you you use the correct hooks when you're you're fishing uh, for different uh, target fish, and so it, there are a lot of different ways you could slip up and. and Knowing the rules and regulations is real important. So fishing season is about to begin. San Francisco Bay is an incredible fishery. We have striped bass. We have halibut. Uh, typically uh, in uh, June, about mid-June, they come in for the spawning, and then they'll be here until uh, the, about the middle of September, and that's when they go back out into the ocean. Uh, and then that starts the transition season because right now we just came out of the transition season. Uh, April 12th uh, was uh, opening day on the bay for those of you with uh, boats and yachts. <laughs> I used to participate on, on uh, opening day on the bay. I love the uh, opening day on the bay, and, but it was very crowded and uh, there were a lot of boats. Nowadays, not as many boats because uh, people can't afford it, the cost of housing here in the Bay Area. And it's really killed off uh, a great recreational resource that sits right here in our backyard. The Bay is an incredible fishery. But I'm going, like I said, I'm going to take this rod. I'm going to get myself a tackle box, get the, the things that I need. Uh, 
at uh, the uh, tackle supplies that I can find uh, locally. Also, be shopping Walmart uh, for for some of the stuff. I, uh, I'm going to try and find some other uh, sporting good fishing uh, dedicated spots that are right here in Oakland because I want to shop local and I want to shop Oakland. Uh, I know what baits that I want want to use for the different zones. Uh, I like to use live bait whenever possible, and so I know uh, of the bait stores that, that I plan on uh, getting uh, bait from. Uh, but then also transporting live bait uh, can be challenging also. And I'm going to invite my friend Sherman uh, Owens uh, and see if he would like to join us. And then we'll, we'll kind of make a, a few days and fish around the Bay Area and show you what's possible. Thanks for joining me today. We'll be right back.